Gaming has evolved so much over the years, and with it we've seen some wonderful accessibility options for all kinds of people. This is an incredible step in the right direction, but I hope gets pushed even further. However, there is more that could be done for a disability that I think doesn't get talked about enough. Dyspraxia. For this video, I won't just be talking about dyspraxia, as there are a couple other disabilities that should also be discussed. I'm sure you're aware of what dyslexia is, as that's more commonly known, but in case you aren't, the Oxford English Dictionary defines it as a general term for disorders that involve difficulty in learning to read or interpret words, letters and other symbols, but does not affect general intelligence. So you may find it hard to count, or letters may get jumbled up so it becomes hard to read. According to research, 9-12% of the world are dyslexic, with 2-4% to seriously affected. So we're looking at over 700 million people with dyslexia in the world. It's obviously quite a lot, no wonder most people know about it. Dyspraxia is very different. Similarly to dyslexia, it doesn't affect general intelligence, but instead affects other aspects, like coordination and balance. So for me, I find it hard to ride a bike with stabilizers. It also affects how you learn new skills. It affects how you write, type, draw, and grasp small objects. It can affect how you function in social situations, how you deal with emotions, how you deal with time management, and the list goes on. Surprisingly, there are apparently 5-10% to of the population of the world who are dyspraxic. But I think it's one of those things that people sort of brush off, because I don't hear people talking about it. It doesn't even have a little section on Google from the Oxford English Dictionary when you ask for a definition, if that's any indication. I will of course get to how gaming has helped me, and how I think the industry could help us more, but I do want to state that if you have these disabilities, or any other disability, there is nothing to be ashamed of. I've been bullied, I'm sure millions of others have too, but you are better than what they've told you. Having a disability is not a weakness, it is a strength that can make you do unique things that no one else can do, and with that strength, you can change the world even if in just a small way. Prove the idiots wrong. Now, there is a third one that sort of falls into this bracket of a disability, and that's Erlen Syndrome. Erlen Syndrome can affect many different areas, including academic and work performance, behaviour, attention, ability to sit still, concentration, and more. That's right, I've got the full package. For me, concentration is the biggest thing. I'll be in the room and I'll look like I'm listening, but I sort of completely zone out. I'm not thinking of anything else, I'm just not there, even though I look no different. Honestly, YouTube videos have helped a lot. Now that you know that I have Erlen's, you'll probably notice it more, but I've sort of trained myself to talk, or quote-unquote stall to a degree, until I zone back in. It doesn't last long for me, usually 10 to 20 seconds, sometimes less, but 20 seconds is a long time. I will state that on my end, this never happens when I'm walking anywhere, so I'm not a danger in the road, but I also don't drive in fear of this. And when it comes to games, I'm actually still playing whilst I'm completely zoned out, I just can't really speak properly. It's, it's weird, like, my brain is running on autopilot, but I'm just not there. When I was a kid, I went through a lot of exercises to get better at dealing with dyspraxia. I had to write sentences constantly on a device that raised the paper at an angle, as I personally find writing very difficult. My handwriting is awful, as you can see here, but there's a little more to it than that. I find pressure a problem. By that, I mean when I hold a pen or a pencil, I'll hold it in a way that physically hurts my hands. Apparently my teacher made me switch to a whiteboard as I was pressing so hard I was making marks in the table. I guess the easiest way to describe it would be holding hands with someone. I may intend to gently hold their hand, but I could unintentionally be squeezing. I also had to learn how to throw a juggling ball to someone and back, throwing and catching for months to train my motor skills to get much better. Not perfect, sure, but better. Now where does gaming come into this? Well, gaming is actually incredibly helpful for my fine motor skills. Playing games, especially 3D platformers on the PS1 like Crash, Spyro, Croc, Bugs Bunny Lost in Time, and more, really helped me get an understanding of movement, and taught me minor precision through difficult platforming that I couldn't do outside of games. But games have evolved, and with that, as I mentioned in the opening, we've seen wonderful accessibility options, especially in the last few years. But one seemingly big advancement has made Dyspraxix's life more difficult. I am talking about the analog controller. I mentioned I have a difficulty with balance, and grasping small objects is a challenge for us. Whilst you don't grasp an analog controller, basically we're combining these two handicaps in one. If I want to go directly up, I can do that, but sometimes I'll veer slightly left or right. 
Additional movement options adds more depth to a game, but it does make precise tasks a nightmare. I have some very specific examples for you that will hopefully help you understand why this is a problem, but I will also offer a solution for game developers. As I mentioned earlier, I used to love playing the PS1 Crash games. Thanks to Crash being brought back into the spotlight, we've seen a sequel to Crash 3 Warped. With Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. Crash 4 has a lot of precise movement, especially for its time trials, which obviously is easy with analog. This is something I cannot do. The directional pad may only have four buttons, but you can of course move in diagonals by hitting two buttons at once, which I find much simpler. I can feel where my thumb is, I know which one I'm on and how to control that. Not so with an analog controller. Thankfully, Crash 4 actually does allow you to use the D-pad, so in this instance, it actually isn't an issue. That said, massive respect to the GameCube controller. It has grooves in each direction surrounding the analog controller, so I'll have a better understanding of where I'm aiming. Speaking of aiming, first-person shooter aiming is pretty difficult. Having the precision I need to get a headshot is pretty tough. It is easier with a mouse, but I personally can't get used to wazzed movement. So many keys next to each other gets my fingers lost and I'll hit the wrong keys. That's probably more a combination of Erlen's and the need to fidget a lot, but I digress. Finally, I want to talk about 2D platformers. Depending on how precise they want you to move left and right, if I'm using analog, sometimes I don't move on certain 2D games if I'm pointing slightly diagonal. Same applies for racing games. If I need to do a hard right and accidentally unknowingly go on the diagonal, I'm not going to make the corner fully as I'm not getting the full amount of my turning. And don't even get me started on fighting games, there is no hope there. But back to 2D platformers, I want to discuss the newly released Metroid Dread. If you're going for 100%, there are sections with the speed boots and shine spark technique. These segments are difficult enough as it is, and they are very cool to navigate, but as someone who has to navigate and shoot at perfect accuracy at speed, this became one of the most infuriating gaming experiences I've ever had. I have called it hell for a dyspraxic, and I stand by it because of analog movement. Simply shooting in a straight line whilst moving is incredibly difficult. Adding platforming to the mix, this is just near impossible. But how do you fix this? I'm aware that dyspraxia isn't exactly a severe disability, but gaming is still made harder for us, and there's actually a very easy fix for almost every game out there. With a game like Metroid Dread, you can't use the D-pad because the D-pad has a separate function. One button reveals secrets, another lets you see the map a little bigger, so you can't use it to make the Shine Spark segment easier. Or can you? How about an accessibility option that just switches the D-pad and analog functions? Why can't the secret or map option be on the analog? It doesn't alter the game in any way whatsoever and would make it incredibly easy and more helpful to the apparently 10% of us who will benefit from this. Yes, to activate the speed boots you have to tap the button on the analog stick, and the other analog stick button is for the invisibility technique, but why don't you just switch those two around? Have the invisibility technique where it's not really that time sensitive, and have the speed boots on the other analog stick whilst I'm moving with a D-pad, like it, it doesn't affect anything, you can totally set it up that way and it would work. I'm aware that you can change the functions of what the buttons do on a console-wide basis, but constantly changing your controls per game on your console is very awkward and not helpful in this scenario. I do respect that putting accessibility options into your game is a massive time sink and also it costs a lot of money, but it will help a lot of us who genuinely do struggle. I'm sure there are people who find it a lot harder than I do, and they're just going to get even more frustrated and, and they're going to feel ashamed that they can't do it even when it's certainly not their fault. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. I would love to know if any of you watching have a disability and if that disability has been catered towards, if you think there's something that could be done to make your life easier within the gaming industry. Yeah, I just, obviously I'm probably not going to make any sort of difference, but I'd like to believe that one day the industry is going to be able to combine their efforts to make sure it is an easier way to play for everyone. But thank you very much for watching, if you enjoyed the video I'd appreciate it if you left a like, subscribe, maybe share the video around. I also have a Twitch, Twitter and a Patreon if you'd like to support me in the channel. Uh, I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.